I have the pleasure of going to a church that has a senior pastor that is in his 60s and has a lot of wisdom, a lot of gems, a lot of knowledge to drop on us. And one of the messages that we heard today was about the power of the tongue. And I think far too often we don't give our words enough um, credence. We don't think that they make the impact that they do, but you can speak life or death into someone just by the words that you choose to say to them. And one of the things that he said that really stuck out to me was the things that you say about yourself make um, much more of an impact on yourself than you think they do. And more often than not, they make a huger impact on you than what things that someone else would say about you. And so when you look in the mirror and you call yourself a failure or you call yourself a loser or you make a mistake or you sin and you keep falling into this habitual sin and you call yourself stupid, you're coming into agreement with that. But not only are you coming into agreement with it, you are disrespecting God's creation. Therefore, you're telling God that he doesn't know what he's doing, that he didn't make you better than that, that you aren't fearfully and wonderfully made, that he doesn't know the plans that he had for you when he stitched you together in your mother's womb. That's what you're telling God in all theory when you tell yourself you're stupid, you're a failure, you messed up again, you'll never amount to anything. And that's what the devil likes to do. The devil likes to sow discord in your life. He likes to make you say these things and feel these things about yourself. Because if you're focusing on the negative, you're not going to focus on the victory that you already have. You're not going to walk in bold confidence. You're not going to let God use you the way that he wants to use you when you speak these great promises that God has made over your life. Be mindful of that. First Peter 3.10 says, For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and let their lips and their lips from deceitful speech. So don't be deceiving people. Don't be telling lies. Don't be running around trying to pull the wool over someone's eyes to probably get some type of selfish uh, gain out of that. That's not going to lead you to uh, everlasting life. Colossians 4, 6 says, let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. I think this is one that is very, very vital to uh, showing Jesus when you have conversations with people. There's going to be someone that wants to know the reason why you follow Jesus, or they want to know why you believe that Jesus is the way to heaven. And they're going to want to debate you, and they might say some things to upset you. I see it far too often in comment sections on different posts on Instagram or on a YouTube video where different religions will be feuding in the comment section. And I see far too often things that Christians say that just break my heart because that's not going to lead someone to our religion. That's not going to lead someone to our faith. That's really going to continue these battles between religions and between faith. And the people have to do better than that if they call themselves Christians. We have to let our words be filled with love, filled with grace, seasoned with salt. So therefore we make it uh, interesting or we make it, um, what's the word? That way we make it appealing to come to the Lord. Ephesians 4, 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do you sit around and make coarse jokes, uh, cut up with your buddies and say inappropriate things? Do are you men that make gay jokes about each other and you're not even gay? That right there, you know, is not that's not beneficial to anyone. Or do you when you see a beautiful woman or a man that you think is handsome, do you comment on their uh, aesthetics? Do you comment on the way their body looks? Do you look at them in a sexual way instead of seeing them as the man or woman of God that they are? Those things have power to either build up a person or automatically go to sin, lust, uh, sexualizing a person, not seeing them as who they truly are. Those things are vital. If you're walking around just cutting up, cussing and saying, you know, things being bitter, gossiping, all those things have power in them. One for good, one for bad. Proverbs 10, 19 says, sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. So imagine that you and your your loved one, your spouse, your partner, whatever, have a de uh, debate. One of you sins against the other. You start cussing each other out, you know, using all these words. It's not going to solve the sin. But when you hold your tongue and you bite your tongue in anger uh, and you choose the right words to say, whether it's I'm sorry, I won't do it again. I have a problem. Help me solve it. Pray with me. Help me come to a remedy that honors you and the Lord. 
Those words are prudent. Those words are the words that will help a resolution come. But cussing each other out, placing the blame, playing the victim, blaming others. Oh, no, that's your fault that I did this. That's not going to lead to a resolution. That's not going to lead to the Lord being honored by those actions. I encourage you guys, analyze your heart. If you are always the one to lash out in anger, or if someone says something to you and you're you're bitter, your heart is going to reflect that. So the things that you say, the words that you use reflect your heart posture. If you are joyful and glad, you're going to treat others with happiness. You're going to be smiling when you see them. Your words are always going to be building each other up. If you're insecure or you think people see you as the fraud that you feel that you are, you're going to be boastful. You're going to be arrogant. Sorry, guys, my neighbor started up his motorcycle. You're going to be arrogant. You're always going to be talking about, oh, look at the things that I have. I'm the alpha male. I'm this. I'm that. You know, I have 10 million cars. I have 10 million houses. I have a billion Ferraris in my jet plane hangar. Nobody cares about that stuff. But the fact that you think that that's what gives you value shows how insecure you are and shows how far your identity is from the Lord. When you've been done wrong, when you are dealing with jealousy or depression or things like that, it reflects in the words that you say. When you speak negatively about yourself or about others, it shows that you have a heart that isn't in the right posture. Proverbs 15, 4 says the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. That kind of goes back to what I was saying about the things where you say about someone and you're commenting on their appearance. Like it's much more than an appearance, guys. It's the heart posture that matters when it comes to a person. Proverbs 15, 28, the heart of righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. Think about those people that just pop off when they get mad and just say whatever comes to their mind. They get offended by something and they just blurt out disrespectful things. The spirit of offense is one of Satan's you know, greatest tools, the bait of Satan. Check that book out by um, Pastor John Brevere. The bait of Satan is going to be having you live in a spirit of offense, because if you're always offended by something, you'll never take value. You'll never take correction. You'll never hear what God's trying to say to you. But instead, you'll always feel like you're being attacked. You'll always feel like someone hates you because they don't agree with what you said or how you want to live your life. They don't agree with your truth. And they're telling you what the truth says. Now you're offended. And when you get offended, you go around telling everyone that you hate them because they don't agree with you. And that's just not true. The Bible says that we're to love our brother and our neighbor. And we can't say that we love them if we're going to condone their sin and not address it. So I read some of these Bible verses to you because it really spoke to me well. I mean, I really hope that it resonates well with you. When we think about the power that we have, we are to edify each other to uh, encourage one another, to build each other up, to uh, exhort one another for the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus would do. And so we ought to be behaving like Jesus would and do the best that we can to honor him in our actions, to glorify his name, to glorify the Lord God Almighty in all that we do. That's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless.